guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a paper bead necklace. Um, I'll start by showing you the supplies that you will need for the project. So to begin, you'll need 10, and you can vary on this, it's completely your preference, um, but for demonstration purposes I'm going to say 10 1 half to 1 inch wide by 8 inches long paper strips and for this demonstration um, we are just going to use rolls of paper towels you could use newspaper if you wanted to, magazines scrapbook paper, any kind of decorative paper you wanted to use would work just fine. Um, liquid glue so we're going to use just regular Elmer's school glue metallic thread, so you'll see the gold thread acrylic paint, tempera paint will work fine, craft paint, really any um, water-based paint will be just fine for this project. You'll need a paintbrush, a metal rod, and we actually just use um, a metal hanger and we cut the long part off and that works just great for this. A pair of scissors, you'll need Mod Podge in the gloss finish. You'll need three to four feet of fishing line. And again, this is where it varies. It depends on whether you want to have one, two, three, four strands on your necklace. It's completely your preference. So that's going to change the amount of fishing line you would need. We're going to do two strands for this. So we're going to use three to four feet of fishing line. You'll need a variety of small rocale and seed beads. Um, some s larger beads can be included as well. You'll see in the mix of beads that I have shown here, um, we will be using some larger ones as well. Again, your preference. Two crimp beads, small crimp beads. You'll need two jump rings, one lobster, clasp or a toggle clasp. I have both shown but we're actually going to end up using the toggle clasp for this. And you'll need a pair of needle nose pliers. And then you can also use the layout tray. You'll see here the blue layout tray that I have which I think is one of the best assets in making a necklace because you can lay out all of your beads and see what they're going to look like before you begin stringing them on to your fishing line so you don't get halfway through it and then decide that you don't like what you have the layout um, and you want to change it up so you can use that to lay out and it allows for two strands on there which works perfect for this project okay so let's begin okay what I'm going to begin doing is showing you how to make your paper beads. Like I said, you can use any type of paper that you want with this. Anything works fine, even tissue paper if you wanted to. Um, we just use these strips of paper towels here. Um, and what you're gonna do, so you've already pre-cut them into the a quarter, you can go as small as a quarter inch, up to an inch, depends how wide you want your beads to be. However wide you make this strip is how wide the bead will be on the necklace. So keep that in mind. And the longer the strip, the thicker the bead. So we usually start with somewhere between 8 inches to 12 inches long and then um, depending on what the kids prefer, they can cut it in the middle of it um, if they don't like it to get as thick as it's starting to become. So I'm going to show you how to do one of these here. And what you'll do is you're going to put the, move these out of the way here. You will place the end of the paper strip on the metal rod and you will begin twisting this bead like so. And you do not need to secure it with any glue at the beginning. And actually, if you do that, you'll find that it gets stuck on the metal rod. So I'm just twisting it like this until I get it as thick as I want. Just trying to keep it straight. 
And so let's say if that's as thick as I wanted it to be, then I could go ahead and trim it there and secure it with the glue. I'll just go ahead and finish it out here. And at this point, we're gonna put a little bit of Elmer's glue. You could use pretty much any glue for this. Probably need to open it first. And I have kids ask all the time what happens if you get too much glue. It's actually not a bad thing because the excess glue you can use to just make sure that it's all flattened down. So your, your fingers are going to get sticky and messy on this. So flatten it down like that. And once you get everything flattened down, just move it a little bit, make sure it's not stuck on there, um, and then you'll continue on doing the other ones. When you get all of them done, I would go back to the ones that you started with and, again, move them. The whole idea is you'd want to make sure that they don't get um, stuck on the metal rod. So from here, you'll finish doing the rest of your paper beads. Once they dry, you'll go back and paint them, so whatever color you want to paint them with, um, and then from there, you'll wrap the metallic thread if you choose to. If you're doing newspaper or a magazine, you may choose to skip that step. Um, in our class, we always do the metallic thread because they usually do a solid color. Um, another thing you can do is when you're wrapping the bead, so when you're making your paper bead, you can squish the bead together if you want more of a rounded, kind of more of an oval shaped bead and it also gives it some texture and what's nice about that is that if you paint a solid color on that so let's say I would paint this um, this particular bead gold I could go back with a color like a turquoise and brush it lightly on top and it's just gonna pick up the raised areas so it almost looks like it's been sponge painted more or less without looking cheesy um, so that's another option for when you're making your beads. When you make these, you could make them half of this size if you wanted to. You could do larger, you could do thicker. Again, all of this is completely your preference. So again, I'm gonna finish out the beads. When we come back to this, I'll have all the beads on here. I'm gonna let them dry and I'm gonna go ahead and paint them black. I'm pretty sure we all know how to paint a bead black, so um, I'm gonna skip that step on here just for the sake of saving time. Just one thing to keep in mind when you paint them, make sure that you get around the edges as well. You don't want a paper bead that's all black on the top and then you can see this kind of brown paper showing through on each side. That would not be pretty. Um, and again, just make sure that you keep moving them between each layer. So when I get done gluing it, I'll make sure that it can move, it's not stuck on there. After I paint it, again, I'll move it. And then after I wrap it with thread and then seal it with the Mod Podge sealer, then I'll be ready to remove it from here. So the whole time that you're making these beads, make sure that you keep them on this metal rod. It's really hard to take it off and then slide it back on. All right, when we come back, I'll have these all done and all painted black. Okay, now that the um, beads are all wrapped and you can tell that they're all painted, obviously, and I have let the black paint dry, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab some gold thread and I'm going to wrap that around the beads. Just adds um, a little texture, a little design to it. So to do this, you're going to take some of the glue and put a little drop of glue wherever you want to start this and you can wrap this however you want. Um, right-handed so I'm going to turn this around like this basically you're just going to take it and free form wrap it around the bead you can wrap it as many times as you want and this is metallic thread um, I want it to be pretty shiny so I'm going to use quite a bit And then once you get it wrapped around, and I also feel like this helps disguise the fact that you used paper to create your bead. Um, once you get it wrapped as many times as you want, then you're going to secure the end with another drop of glue. And don't worry 
about the ends sticking up a little bit as long as they stay somewhat and when you go back and add the sealer it'll help brush that down and you can tell some of the paint is going to come off on your fingers um, even if it's dry just depends on the, the paint that you use so no big deal um, so you can see here it's sticking up a little bit no big deal again because when I go back with the Mod Podge it's going to help brush that down and then anything at that point that's less sticking up you can go back and trim off so from here I'm going to go back and I'm going to wrap all of my beads and then I'm going to go ahead and put the sealer on after they dry um, and again I'm going to skip that step for the sake of saving time um, basically you're just brushing it on when you brush it on it's going to look like basically like Elmer's glue um, kind of white but it will dry clear and again just make sure you're twisting your beads especially after you put the Mod Podge layer on you want to twist it and make sure that it's loose so that it doesn't get stuck on your metal rod. So when I come back, I'm going to have all of my beads sealed. They're going to be um, wrapped with the metallic thread, and I'm going to go ahead and remove them from the um, dowel or the um, metal rod as well. Okay. While my beads are drying, I just put the last coat of sealer on. Um, I went ahead and laid out my beads, the other beads that I'm gonna include along with my paper beads. Um, and I use this um, layout tray. Again, this is optional if you wanna use this. Um, I just like it to be able to see where all my beads are gonna go. So when I begin stringing them on, um, I'll have a plan in mind. So you can see where I've left the spaces here um, for the paper beads once those dry. Um, and with that, I'll include, ended up I've decided to end up using six. Um, so for now, I'm going to scoot this out of the way. I'm going to show you how to crimp the end of your um, string, your fishing line here. Okay. So you're going to gather the two ends together. And so this is if you're doing a double strand. You're going to put your jump ring on. Okay. And then backtrack a little bit. So the jump ring is going to go halfway up. Then you're going to take your two, just like that, take your two strands together, slide a crimp bead, which is this little tiny bead, slide that on here. Pull that all the way up right next to that crimp bead and take your needle nose pliers and just crimp that bead or squish it if you want to think of it that way. And that will hold that jump ring in place and then that gives you two strands to start stringing your beads on. And then you can also then go back and you'll just open the jump ring up and attach the one end of your toggle clasp. Okay, and then when you get done, I'll show you how to finish the other end, and you'll attach the other side of your toggle clasp. So remember, um, you're going to string on your beads and then finish the other end. I'm going to go ahead and string all my beads on. I'm not going to show all that now. We don't have time to watch all that craziness. Um, but when I string them on, I want to keep one strand a little bit shorter than the other to allow them to um, stagger, like again, like they're shown here. So I'll have the inside one that'll be a little bit shorter than the other one. So when I come back, I'll have all my beads on and I'll show you how to finish that up. Okay, um, I have all of the beads on. As you can see, my paper beads, there are six of those on here. You can see I finished wrapping them with the wire, or I'm sorry, with the uh, metallic thread and sealed them with the Mod Podge. Once they had dried, I slid them off of the um, metal rod. I only chose um, six just because when I laid out my beads, that's what I wanted to use. So even though I made more, I only used six of them. So I just picked out the six that I felt looked um, the best. So when I put the beads on, I made sure that um, I kept it symmetrical, which once again, as a matter of preference, um, 
I just like that look on here, especially with the double strand. You could certainly um, change up the beads so that it's not the same on both sides, but I would really consider balance when you're doing this. So because I used a combination of black, white, and gold beads, if I had a lot of white here, I would want to somehow incorporate an equal amount of white on this side. Not necessarily symmetrical, um, but again, you just want to make sure that everything is balanced. So even though I have one larger white, or it's kind of a cream colored bead here, um, I will use these smaller seed beads to help spread and incorporate that white color throughout the rest of the necklace as well. Otherwise, that one bead would have really been out of place. So um, the other thing is that the inside strand is slightly shorter. That will give it a staggered look. So when this necklace is hanging from my neck or someone else's neck, um, it will lay nicely instead of them being bunched up on top of each other. So the same if you did a third one, you would have one that would be slightly longer than this one. Um, you can have them all bunched up if you want, if you were doing smaller beads, but especially with these bigger beads, staggered is definitely the way to go. So I'm gonna show you how to finish the necklace up here. So you can see that on this side where I'd started, we attached the jump ring and we crimped it. I went ahead and put on um, the round part, the circular part of the toggle clasp that we're using. And now I'm going to use my other crimp bead my other jump ring and the T part of the toggle clasp to finish off this end. So I have both ends together here and you want to make sure that you pull the beads, push them down as far as they can go to the opposite end so that they're pulled tightly. And from there I am going to slide on the crimp bead over both strands again and this one's going to be slightly different than how you started it so I'll pull those so that the, there we go I'm going to pull that crimp bead so that it touches the beads I'm going to slide on I'm going to slide this crimp bead so that it touches these other beads here and then I'm going to put the jump ring on now so that that's on there. So I've got the crimp bead over both ends and then the jump ring and then I'm going to take the two ends and go back through the crimp bead and I'm going to pull that tightly and you'll want to grab a hold of the jump ring and I would do that with your pliers and pull your two ends so that it tightens everything up like that. And then from there, you'll crimp your bead again. So remember, you're just squishing it with your needle nose pliers, you're crimping it. Trim off the excess fishing line, like that. And now all you need to do is just open this jump ring up, slide on the other end of the toggle clasp, the T part. Close that jump ring back. This is a really tiny jump ring, so it'll work here. Losing it. And I will tell you, although I keep my nails pretty short, any of you girls that have long fingernails, this gets to be pretty tough. So now that that ends on, the necklace is complete. So you'll see this T part just slips into the ring part of the toggle clasp and it's all finished up. So this is something that frequently I get comments on um, when people see these in the display cases here around our school. They don't understand what the big deal is. It just looks like someone just strung a bunch of beads on fishing line. But what they don't realize is that our students are hand making these beads that they're incorporating. So it's a really neat project. They always tend to turn out really well. So that is the paper bead necklace. Please visit our website 
at www.cnhsart.com.